the last few years, the state of Massachusetts has been fortunate enough to have experienced relatively no snow. The disillusions of a snowless winter are now dead. This year, Massachusetts has received an exorbitant amount of snow, completing the snow budget for the town of Chelmsford. Every year is different. Some years we're under budget, some years we're over budget. As long as you maintain the same level funding that you have, you can overspend that budget. Right now, we have depleted the snow budget, so we'll be overdraft on all of the budget for the whole year. The town of Chancellor budgets $460,000 for snow. The town manager has to make up the extra money. Uh, he makes it up either out of the general fund or wherever he can scrape it up. Right now, as I say, we budget $460,000 this past year um, under state law. It's the one account uh, within a town that you can overspend um, so long as you've uh, budgeted the same amount that you had budgeted the year before. And uh, any overrun, you make up the following fiscal year. So money that we've spent in this fiscal year that ends on June 30th, we'll actually, um, we pay our bills this fiscal year, but we come up with the money in fiscal year 04. Um, and we'll probably use any surplus that we have from other accounts to move in to cover that cost. The recent storm that we had on uh, President's Day, um, was determined by the governor uh, and the federal government to be a, an emergency and uh, we are applying for um, federal aid uh, for about eighty thousand dollars to uh, that's what we think we'll get as a reimbursement to us occasionally the uh, the snow and ice crews are paid over time uh, our own workers when they um, work outside their normal eight hour day we do have a night crew on uh, during the winter that uh, two to three people that work uh, there's a 5% differential in their pay, so that's not really overtime. But when we call them in for uh, nights uh, or weekends or holidays, uh, or if they stay beyond their normal day at any time, uh, they do go into an overtime mode where they get paid either time and a half or double time for their time. Uh, we also use quite a number of private plows. In fact, we have more private plows than uh, town plows that we uh, will use for large snowstorms and they get a set amount per hour, and it tends to, you know, it, it, they have to supply their own equipment as well as the manpower, so it, uh, that goes up in, in cost uh, pretty well. The frequency of the potholes in the town of Chelmsford has grown. This is attributed to the harsh winter that we have experienced this year. No, I'd say this year the main reason of potholes is uh, we've had four and a half, three and a half feet of frost go into the ground in very cold winter and the frost has really penetrated. It's between thaw and freeze, thaw and freeze, water gets in there, thaws, breaks up, then it refreezes and starts a hole. Uh, potholes are fixed out of the highway department's expense budget. Potholes are a problem anywhere <laughs> where it's cold. And this year I think um, road crews throughout the state are going to be extremely busy. And I know here in Chelmsford, um, the patch crews are out. Unfortunately, Massachusetts law only covers drivers on Massachusetts state highways for uh, bodily injury to them, not to the personal property. So if you're physically injured, you know, um, like you lose your false teeth when you hit that pothole, um, you can recover from the state. If you're injured in a pothole on the state highway, you've got to call Mass Highway, or if you're on one of the roads owned by the Port Authority, you should call Mass Port. Um, both are located headquartered in Boston. Again, I want to caution you that the damages you can recover are only for personal injuries, not for property damage. If you're on um, one of Chelmsford's roads and you hit a pothole and the town should have known or does know about the pothole, they are liable. You need to do a few things. You need to report to the town within 30 days um, the, the injury to you or your vehicle. This falls under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 84. There's a whole section there about roadways, bridges, and, um, and making sure that they're not defective. Um, and for your viewers, if they encounter potholes, uh, they should be looking at Chapter 84, Sections 15 and Sections 18. Uh, the notice of injury and limitation of actions and personal injuries 
or property damage from defective ways. I think it's important that people know that there is recourse, that they're not just out on their own on the road. The state has an expectation when it hands money over to cities and towns that they're going to take care of their roadways. And one of the things that um, Chelmsford has to do is to make sure that people can drive safely on the road and repair any defects as soon as they're aware of it or if they should have been aware of it. If we're not aware of the defect in the roadway, the, the pothole, uh, then uh, someone cannot make a claim against the town. Once we become aware of the defect, uh, we're given a reasonable amount of time to send someone out to fix it, and if that doesn't take place and someone damages their vehicle, they could potentially hold us liable for the cost. Uh, in my 15, 16 years here, it's very rare that we have paid a pothole claim because typically they, they sprout up and um, as soon as we hear about it, we go out and we fix it, but in the meantime, it's a, it is possible for someone to damage their, their wheel or tire on the, the pothole. If the pothole isn't reported and somebody uh, hits a pothole, maybe breaks the tires or drops off some, uh, some hardware, the question is, should the town have known about the pothole? It might have been on a side street that gets very, very little traffic, um, and that might be viewed differently than if it's on a main drag and uh, you know thousands of cars pass every day. The question and the test is, should the town have known um, or has somebody else already reported it? So I think it's a good idea if uh, you're a motorist or even a pedestrian, if you see a pothole that can uh, cause some damage, let the town know. It should get fixed. To report a pothole on Chelmsford Roads, call 978-250-5270. To report a pothole on State Roads, call 1-800-227-0608. The charter school bill was passed into law in Massachusetts in 1993. It was started as an experiment to encourage competition in the public school systems. To get an idea of what the Murdoch Charter School is, and how it affects Chelmsford, we talked with Walter Landberg, the director of the charter school. Then, to find out how the charter school affects the Chelmsford public school system, we talked with Dr. Moser, the superintendent of schools. And finally, to find out how the ch charter system was set up and why, we talked with Donald Sirianni, the chief of staff at the Massachusetts State House. The charter school's aim is to create an environment where students are uh, interested in the subject area. Uh, that, that we're teaching, which is based on the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks, just like any other public school. Our focus and our philosophy um, gets kids involved and gets kids to learn uh, the curriculum frameworks through a project-based interdisciplinary approach to teaching. The main thing that we would like to believe that we do uh, that affects the Chelmsford public school system uh, is that we are another option for Chelmsford Public School students and families. The main problem uh, that we've been talking about is that the uh, charter school movement in the uh, state of Massachusetts uh, was basically developed on a competitive model. And it's very difficult to uh, collaborate uh, when you're competing. And that's what the name of the game is, uh, the way the state legislature developed the, the charter school program. What we're competing for uh, are the dollars that come from the state to support education uh, in the Commonwealth and in Chelmsford. In terms of how we financially affect the district, um, that's, that's a more challenging question. Uh, when charter school legislation was written, um, it was written so that charter schools receive their money uh, from the state. Uh, we receive uh, 7200 approximately $7,200 per student. Um, the towns are notified, as I understand it, uh, ahead of time in the spring or the summer about how many students are going to go to charter schools. So they know ahead of time how many students they're losing. So theoretically, uh, when they lose students, uh, they may receive less funding from the state but theoretically, they're not educating those students. Um, the charter school is. When the charter school first began, we had a charter school bill of about $550,000. And we were able to cut uh, only two staff members uh, from our program and other parts of our budget 
uh, by about uh, maybe $100,000. So it isn't fair to say that the dollars that are used to support the education of a charter school student are simply dollars that go with the student from the public school to the charter school. We can't cut our budget uh, to make the programs uh, for the kids who are left behind in, in our Chelmsford for Public Schools equitable. We met with the school committee uh, earlier uh, in the winter to talk about um, getting ourselves uh, into the elementary schools to share the Murdoch Middle School uh, with uh, the parents of those schools and uh, at that time the, the uh, school committee um, denied us that access uh, based on uh, the idea that uh, we're competing with them for, for students. Um, to a certain extent, I understand their perspective on that. Uh, at the same time, I, I, I do feel that if I were a parent in Chelmsford, uh, I would want to have the opportunity to know all of my educational options. It comes back to the same issue. If we're competing for the same resources, any collaboration that hurts the kids in the Chelmsford Public Schools uh, is very difficult for us to, uh, uh, to collaborate on. And uh, it's not a question of having different philosophy, different personalities, uh, and uh, issues that uh, exist between the school. It's all built on the financial issue, and we simply won't participate in activities that are going to hurt kids that we're responsible for. The bottom line is, um, is the system working for each child? And I think any time you look at a metric, you can have um, people disagree about what the measurements really show. And in Massachusetts, the disagreement, I think, is on a pretty large scale. Um, you've got on one spectrum the Pioneer Institute that will say, you know, we've got the MCAS results they look positive for charter schools. Charter schools, for the most part, don't take students, um, or they don't have students, I should say, that are more expensive to educate and sometimes have greater difficulties. And, and there's three categories that readily come to mind, and that's special education students, bilingual education students, and vocational education students. And those um, categories of students tend to be expensive um, they usually take a little bit more time and of course their MCAS results get scored in with the rest of the public school students and might bring the numbers down. The overall effectiveness of charter schools I think is, is um, a conversation that hasn't fully been engaged by the public yet. Um, locally here in, in town we can see that there have been some students that have gotten a wonderful education in the charter school program. Um, and the same can be said for the public education system in Chelmsford. It is a matter of choice for parents um, and ultimately what we need to do though is build in an accountability, some way of measuring both the money, the resources going in, the quality of education for students coming out. I think uh, as time goes by we'll find out that the costs involved and the damage um, to public school systems um, will prove out that the charter school system is an experiment that was noble and worth doing, but ultimately didn't succeed and didn't hit the, the marks that it claimed that it would. Community education is housed in the lobby of Chelmsford High School and offers many services to the community such as child daycare and adult education, as well as many other student services. Here to talk more in depth about the services offered is the director of community ed, Scott Johnson. Our community education night school program is not what some people would call an adult basic education program. It is not a GED program, uh, and th this program is not a high school diploma program. We print and mail 60,000 brochures for a fall semester and a spring semester, which actually our spring is starting this week. Uh, we, we mail them out to the, the community and to surrounding towns and then the people can register either by mail or they can uh, get our uh, website, the community ed website, which is actually on the brochure also. And a lot more people are doing it directly. They mail in or we have one night of walk-in registration. And we have probably about 500 people on each of Tuesday and Thursday nights uh, throughout the course of the year taking courses. 
We have 12 students. It's called uh, Cooking the Easy Way, and tonight we're doing a simple uh, leek and potato soup and a Spanish salad. And next week we're going to do an entree of chicken marsala with uh, a vegetarian pasta sauce, pasta, and a garlic bread. We run a before and after school extended day program at all five of our elementary buildings. The program starts at 7 in the morning so parents can drop their students off as early as 7 uh, and pick them up as late as 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and that's a big benefit for our, our working parents who need that service. Uh, expanded upon that is that we also run during school vacation. We run a school vacation program and then that flows right into what we call Summerfest. Uh, which is an all-day program. Every week during the summer we have a different theme week. Um, and during that there's a, always a special event, there's arts and craft activities, sports activities, and it's a continuation of basically that child care coverage uh, which working parents need uh, year-round. Hello, my name is David Grudinski. I am the site supervisor of the extended daycare program at the Harrington School. Uh, the program is located at the Harrington School, the Parker School, the Byam School, the Westland School, uh, the South Row School, and the Center School. We operate both morning and afternoon programs for the working parents of Chelmsford. Uh, when the children come to our program, they are involved in many, many different activities, from arts and crafts. Uh, they're able to watch videos. Uh, we take them outside to play in the playground when the weather is appropriate. Uh, they have homework clubs where the kids can do their homework and get whatever responsibilities they have for school finished. We have a preschool down in the lower level of Chumpson High School for three and four year olds and we also have uh, two full day kindergarten programs, uh, one that's uh, um, housed over at the Center School and one that's housed over at the South Row School where parents can leave their students for the session they're not in kindergarten and combine it in any aspect with our full day coverage. In all of our buildings in, in the school district, we have our guidance counselors. Uh, there's one in each of the elementary buildings. We have three guidance counselors in each of the two middle schools, and we have six guidance counselors here at the high school. Uh, they will provide all of the, uh, you know, the normal guidance activities, uh, the normal day-to-day -day issues that, that our students have. Summer school, we've done here on a regional basis. Uh, we take in students from probably about 30 different sending schools and we'll have between four and five hundred students each summer here.